Hello everyone, this is Harry Gill and I am back with the next topic of chapter 18, the concurrency API and today we will be discussing scheduling task. In the real world scenarios, it's very common to have a task to be done at the regular intervals. Say you want to create a job which runs at every five minutes and check a status of another program that's running or say you want to generate and send a report at the end of day every day. For these kind of scenarios, we want to happen the task at regular intervals and Concurrency API provides a way to do that. Concurrency API has an interface called Scheduled Executor Service, which is designed for this purpose. The way we obtain the instance of Scheduled Executor Service interface is pretty much same what we have seen before. So we define a variable called scheduled executor service. We will use the executor factory and the method that we will use to get instance is new single thread scheduled executor. Previously, we had used new single thread executor. Once we get hold of the instance, then we can call the methods that are on the scheduled executor service. Now let's see what, what all methods do we have in the interface. Instead of listing the methods here in the slide, let's jump into the IntelliJ and look at the documentation. I'm going to create a new package called part5 and in that I'm going to create a new class called schedule. In the main method, let me declare a variable of scheduled executor service and I'll assign to null for now. Now, if I hit command and click on Mac or control plus click on Windows, it will take us to the documentation of the interface. The very first thing to note is that the schedule executor service extends the executor service, which means all of the methods that we have seen so far in executor service are also available in scheduled executor service, such as submit, invoke any, invoke all, shutdown, etc. There are in total four methods that are specific to scheduled executor service and we'll look all of them in this video. The very first one is the schedule method. It takes a runnable task and also a delay. So this method will run the task that we have provided with a delay of the time that we provided. So it wouldn't run the task straight away. We can delay the task as much as we want. Notice that the return type of the method is scheduled future. Now let's uh, jump into scheduled future. Again, I'll do a command plus click on scheduled future to go into its uh, documentation. This interface is extending two other interfaces. One is delayed and the other one is future. Let's first look into the delayed interface. So delayed interface has a method called get delay. This method returns the time that is left for the task to run. Now let's go back and to go back you can go in the navigate menu and click go back or you can use the shortcut on Mac it's command plus opening square bracket and I believe on Windows it's control plus left arrow key. And the other interface that scheduled future extends is future. This is the same interface that we have seen in the previous video. So nothing new in this one. Let's again go back. The second method in the scheduled executor service is again uh, a different variant of schedule. And in this case, it's taking a callable instead of a runnable. And as we have seen in the previous video, callable can return some value, but runnable doesn't return. So depending on the scenario, if your job returns a value back from the thread or not, you can use either the first variant or the second variant. And to get the value that is returned from the thread, you can call the get method on the scheduled future object. The third method in the interface is scheduled at fixed rate. So this takes a command as a first argument, initial delay as a second argument, and period as a third argument. This particular method can be used to run a task at the regular provided intervals. Previous to scheduled method that we saw, in that 
it will only fire the task once but in this case we can ask it to do it continuously after the initial delay the fourth one is scheduled with fixed delay the signature of the method looks very similar to the scheduled with fixed rate the only difference is in here the third argument is a delay rather than period the difference between this method and scheduled at fixed rate is in scheduled with fixed delay the delay that we provide time period only counts when the previous job has finished say you have a long running job say the job that you run takes two minutes and the delay that we give is one minute in this particular case the job will run for two minutes and then there will be a delay after the first job finished and then again the job will be kicked which will take another two minutes but in the previous method which is scheduled at fixed rate it doesn't care if your job has finished whenever the time period that we have given expires it schedules another job we'll see an example of this which will clear the concept now let's go back to the main method in the main method i will define a callable task and uh, i'll just define a simple one where it would return a string value and in this case it will say returned from thread and let me create a try and finally block just like we did previously since the scheduled executor service extends the executor service we will have the access to shutdown now to get the instance i'll use the executors factory and call the method new single thread scheduled executor and now I'm calling the schedule method, which takes a task and I'm asking it to run the task after five seconds. And I'll assign the output of the schedule to scheduled future. And using that future, I'm going to get the result that is returned from the thread. I'll add the exceptions return from get into main method. And now I'll save and run the program. Now the program has started, but it's not running the task because it's waiting for that five second timer and there you go now the thread has been run and we got the response that was returned from the thread into the main method and we have printed it now to use the other variant of the schedule let me change the callable into a runnable and since runnable doesn't return any value let's simply print something within the thread and we don't need to get value because it doesn't return anything and i'll save and run the program and now the program has started, but it's waiting for the five second timeout. And there you go. Once the five second timeout is over, it runs the job. Now let me modify the program to look into the third method, which is scheduled at fixed rate. And I'm going to give a initial delay of five seconds. And then once the time expires, I want the job to run every second. One thing to note when we run a task at a fixed rate or with the fixed delay is that we do not shut down the executor because if we shut down the executor, then it will actually stop working. So let me remove the finally block. And now I'll save and run the program. So the program has started. It's waiting for that initial five second delay. And now it's running the thread and it will run every one second because that's what I have asked it to do. And since it's a scheduled service and we haven't put any logic to shut down the executor, so it's gonna run forever. So we can hit that small red button to stop the task in IntelliJ. If we do want the executor to shut down, we have to put some extra logic on whatever we want. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sleep for some time and then shut down the executor. I have added a sleep of 10 seconds and now let me bring the try and finally block and in the finally block like before we will do a shutdown we don't need execution exception in this case so i'm going to remove that so after the sleep i'm going to cancel the task so what's going to happen now is after we ask the scheduled executor service to schedule the task then the main thread will sleep for 10 seconds and once that happens then i'm going to cancel the task using the cancel method on the future object and this will cancel the task and once that happens the try block finishes and the control comes to finally and the executor is stopped and our program will end so this is one of the logic to avoid the running of a job forever
there could be multiple we could put a logic where we want to count how many times the job has been run and then stop it when the count reaches so i'm going to save and run the program and now the program is waiting for that initial delay and now we sleep method is waiting for 10 seconds now once the 10 second period expired we cancel the feature task and then we shut down the executor when that happens our main thread exits now let me get rid of the logic where we are shutting down the executor i just wanted to demonstrate how we could shut it down if we want to and now what i'm going to do is i am going to modify our runnable task a bit i want the task to take some time to execute so that i can demonstrate the next method the way I'm going to simulate the task is, I'm going to put a sleep method. Sleep method throws exception. So let's uh, catch those. I don't want to print any stacks error stacks, so let me just ignore. I'm going to put a print line at the start of the task and also modify below one and change it to end of a task. Now let me save and run the program as is. So now the program is waiting for that five second initial delay. And now the task has started, but it's a long running task. Task ended and the next task already started. And the reason the next task started immediately was because it has already passed that one second period that we have given it. So that one second period starts as soon as the task is kicked off. Since the task ran longer than our time period, the next task ran immediately after that. Now let's say you want to have a gap between the first task and the second task, which is where the fourth method comes handy. I'll change the method name to scheduled with fixed delay. And I'll save the program and run it. Now it's waiting for the initial delay. The thread has started since it's long running we are waiting for it to finish and the thread finished and then see there was a gap in between the start of the next one and end of the previous one and this gap is due to that one second period that we gave so this method scheduled with fixed delay will make sure that there is the provided delay in between the two jobs regardless of how long the job is running that are all the methods that I wanted to discuss in this uh, video. If you have liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe it. In the next video, we are getting into more interesting topics of multithreading. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next one.